Welcome back everybody, Eric here. Hope you're all having a great day. And today I am gonna be answering a question. I get this quite often. People ask me, Eric, what is the ideal AR-15 barrel length? What barrel length should I choose? I mean, there's so many options with the AR. You can build pistols, rifles, DMRs, and you can change calibers out and all this sort of stuff. So is there an ideal barrel length for ARs? We're gonna dive into this. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our friends at SDI for supporting today's video. If you're looking for a career in gunsmithing, they are your go-to people. They've got some awesome drone programs now, so check those out for sure. Um, stuff on the business side, teach you how to run a gun business. Um, tons of programs, so check them out. SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute, and tell them that Eric sent you. You can find it down in the link below here in the description box. So, you know, there's been a heck of a lot of experiments that have been conducted over the years with ARs. And uh, as you know, the OG is like a good old 20 inch barrel. Uh, the 20 Club, okay, uh, a lot of you folks who were in the military back in the day are, are familiar with this site here, you know. This is a uh, like an M16A2 type of arrangement. This is an SP1 uh, Colt, by the way. Uh, this is a Colt. Really cool setup, and uh, this gun gives you full velocity. If you're firing 55 grain ammo, 62 grain ammo, you're going to realize the full amount of potential out of the 5.56 cartridge using the full length service rifle. But as the needs over the years have changed, um, more clandestine operations, uh, close in work where a shorter gun is required. Um, obviously, over the years, you've seen things like the M4 give way, and the M4 has a usually, I think, a 14 and a half inch barrel. Okay, so a little bit shorter. Uh, you've got civilian ARs, most have a 16 inch barrel. This is a Robinson XCR. This is actually not an AR. However, this has a 16 inch barrel. I wanted to show it to you. Uh, so, this is uh, indicative of a gun with a 16 inch barrel right here in terms of the length. You know, most shooters are used to. Um, a rifle about this size for a full-length AR. And most American shooters, uh, civilian American shooters, tend to prefer the 16-inch over a 20-inch just because it's sort of a, a nice midline between the velocity and the uh, maneuverability of a short M4. And most M4s, if it has to have a 16-inch barrel anyway to be legal, um, unless you can have an OG you know, 14 and a half inch M4, or if you build an SBR or a pistol, um, you know, 16 tends to be where your average AR length tends to lie uh, for most people in the civilian shooter world, personal defense, competition, that sort of thing. I mean, there are competition guys that run 20s and things like that, but I guess it depends on what they're trying to accomplish. Then you go down the rabbit hole of something like a Mark 18. Now this has a 10.3 inch barrel. Now this one's been decked out really nice here. We've got an EOTech uh, red dot and magnifier and a big thanks to EOTech for sending that out, by the way, for us to do some review work on. And this has the DD Wave series uh, 3D printed suppressor from Daniel Defense on it. So this is a type of gun that operators will use, you know, for entry and going into, you know, short rooms and small, uh, short distances and things like that. And the 10.3, you know, is a great length. It does have its limitations. Uh, you know, can you engage targets at 300 yards with a 10.3? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, is it as effective uh, terminally as a 20? Absolutely not. There's a big difference between 5.56 out of a 20-inch barrel and 5.56 out of a 10.3. Now we get down into something like what we'd call a kitty cat upper, and that's a 7-inch. Okay, now this is a 7-inch pistol with the Dolos quick takedown system. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. You know, you can take the gun apart uh, pretty quickly and stow it away in a backpack. So, you know, this does fill a certain niche because with this setup, you can take the gun down really compact and stuff it away. Uh, now, 5.56 five, out of a seven inch barrel, how useful is it really? I would say very limited. Uh, you're kind of really getting more into like 22 magnum power at that point. And then, of course, once you, you know, exacerbate that out to range, a 7-inch is not going to be very useful past a few hundred yards. If, honestly, I'd say 100 yards uh, for the type of purposes that you would use an AR for. Now, for this whole video, we've been talking about 5.56. We haven't really talked about conversion calibers. We'll get into that in just a moment. Now, 
to answer the original question posed at the beginning of the video, what is the ideal barrel length for an AR? Well, <laughs> I think a 20 inch is the ideal barrel length for an AR in 5.56 because that gives you the full potential that the rifle is meant to deliver in terms of power and to shoot it the maximum distance and have the maximum amount of power with the longest barrel. Now, 20 inch may not always be practical. Um, I would say that if you can't field a 20 inch, the 16 is useful, but honestly, a 10.3 is great. So for home defense these days, this is my jam, the Mark 18. I prefer the Mark 18 because with a 10.3 and the right projectile uh, bullet, you know, I use either the um, M855A1 or I use the 62 grain Federal FBI load, uh, which unfortunately is not very easy to get. But I use that particular load because it is optimized for short barrels and it works fantastic and it has an expanding bullet. So I use a 62 grain bonded bear claw bullet, or I think it's some sort of bonded bullet that Federal loaded for the FBI back in the day. And I still have a quantity of that stuff sitting around and that's what I run out of the Mark 18. And it's a fantastic bullet in conjunction with this rig and in conjunction with a purpose that lines up with what that barrel length is meant to accomplish. That's maneuverability, compact nature, easy to maneuver, easy to shoot, fast follow-up shots, put your flashlight on it. Okay, you turn the corner, there's a bad guy. The engagement's close. The engagement is within a room that you're in. In that environment, the 10-3 is fine. Now in the open field, would I wanna get into a gunfight with a 10-3? Mm. Could I protect myself with it? Yes, absolutely. I can shoot this 10-3 quite good, no problem. I would prefer a 20 inch, or dare I say a Scar Heavy, <laughs> or a 6.5 Creedmoor Auto Loader, or something with some more power if I'm out in the open field and you're talking several hundred yards or something like that. But that's a completely different talk uh, from going from a Mark 18 to a 20 inch AR. Now, are there some really good conversion cartridges out there? I mean, yeah, there's some guys shooting six arc and having some really good luck with six arc. You know, in a small, uh, short action platform, six arc is fantastic out of a longer barrel. You get a ton of extra power, ton of extra velocity, heavier bullet, better BCs. So the AR is not a one trick pony. So I guess what I would really, you know, sort of drive home to y'all in this video is that barrel length is a factor but so is the cartridge that the gun is chambered in, the bullet weight you use, the bullet design, the shot placement. There are many things that determine how effective a firearms platform can be. But what makes the AR such an attractive platform from day one is its ability to be so, so easily customized uh, to your exact needs. So say that you had you know, your favorite AR, like say in this case, this Colt, and I love an A2, uh, length on the bottom. You know, I like that kind of full rifle feel, but maybe I want to have something skinny on top. I could always put a shorter, uh, you know, barrel on, I could buy a dissipator uh, with a 16 inch barrel and put it on this and have the barrel length a little bit shorter to have a more maneuverable rifle if I wanted to. Or let's say I had an AR pistol uh, like the seven inch and I go, well, you know what? The seven inch just doesn't really have the power that I want. Well, well that's fine. Pull the seven inch uh, up or off and by all means, put an 11 and a half on it or a 10 and a half or a, a 14.5. And then on the 14.5, you could pin and weld a muzzle device and uh, have a proper stock on the gun and not have to have it as an SVR to make your overall length. You could do a pin and welded, that sort of thing. Uh, or in the case of this Mark 18, say that, you know, this is a two tax gun. Okay, this is an SBR and a separate suppressor. Okay but I could just as easily pin and weld this suppressor onto a Mark 18 pistol and then make it a one tax gun if I wanted to. Uh, I'm pretty sure that would meet overall length requirements. I have to check the length, but let's just say if the overall length of barrel and suppressor w was beyond 16, then you could just pin and weld the suppressor, put a stock on it and make it a one tax gun. So that's an option as well. But the pistol, you know, the pistol realm in the AR world does you know, really change things in terms of what you can accomplish with different barrel lengths, different car, uh, cartridge conversions. So say you had a 5.56 and okay, well, a 10.3 is gonna, you know, kind of be my house gun. You could always run a 300 blackout, okay? Uh, short barrel, even with the 110 grain Barnes uh, service load, 
is definitely nothing to, to slouch at. I mean, so if you are going to run the shorter barrel and say you do want uh, to have that, that velocity and power, you can always go with 300 blackout route. Maybe you run a 14 inch or a 16 inch barrel on 300 blackout uh, loud, uh, maybe not with, that, with a can, but just run it loud and run it with the 110 grain Barnes uh, triple shock load. Now you're talking and uh, that load has definitely some good power and uh, good velocity and energy and downrange performance out to several hundred yards um, that might actually trump the, uh, the, 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 the 556 in some areas depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, so whether you go 6 arc or 300 uh, blackout uh, or something like that or 65 uh, Grendel, okay, uh, there are options for cartridge conversions that can definitely sort of change the power uh, struggle, if you will, on barrel lengths. Uh, for instance, if you built a 458 SOCOM uh, AR pistol, well, yes, a 458 SOCOM out of a little 10 or 11 inch barrel is going to be a fire breather. And yes, it doesn't have quite the velocity of its longer barrel brethren. However, now you're launching a 350, 400 grain pill, even at a modest speed, is still going to have a really good amount of downrange energy, even out to a few hundred yards. And it's obviously going to suppress really well and that sort of thing. The same could be said for 50 Beowulf. If you wanted to build a 50 Beowulf upper in like a 10 and a half inch barrel, I mean, now it's going to be a fire breather. It's going to, you know, it's going to be cool. Uh, however, that's an option. You could throw a Bowers Verse 50 on that, uh, that bad, bad boy. If you haven't checked out Bowers suppressors, check them out. They're awesome. But the Bowers Verse 50 is a great suppressor option for the 50 Beowulf. Uh, now even out of a pistol length uh, barrel, you still are talking a gun that delivers an extreme amount of downrange energy that obviously trumps this uh, Mark 18 by a huge margin in terms of energy. Now, is it going to penetrate body armor and things like that? Probably not, but then again, neither, neither will the 10-3. Unless you're really close and, the, and you're talking only level 3 or lower, if you're talking level 4, none of these guns are going to penetrate it anyway. So see, again, it's all about purpose, intention, uh, what the intended purpose and task for the given firearm is. But remember, at the end of the day, there is no perfect barrel length for the AR, only a, a perfect situation that you've planned for accordingly. So the 10-3 has its use, the 20 inch has its use. The only thing in this video I would say is that the seven inch is probably a little limited. Like recently, FN released their SCAR uh, light pistol with a seven inch barrel. And of course, Daddy E took to social media and told him, bro, like y'all y'all need to do at least a 10-3. Or, or a 10 and a half or maybe an 11 and a half inch barrel in this bad boy because seven has some very limited ballistic potential. Now, when you go from a 14 and a half inch barrel to a 10.3, you do lose some velocity, but not too much. Like in a room to room fight, you're still pretty well gunned with a 10.3. But when you go from a 10.3 to a seven, you lose an exponential amount of velocity that basically turns this gun into an over glorified toy at this point. Now, no gun is a toy, obviously, but you know what I mean. Uh, the difference between going from a 10.3 to a 7 and going from a 10.3 to a 14 and a half are astronomically different in terms of the amount of power that the gun gives you. So I, I really wish that FN would have released the Scarlight pistol with like a 10 and a half or 11 and a half inch barrel so it'd be a little bit more useful. I mean, if someone's going to spend that kind of money and buy that pistol and then turn around and pay a tax stamp and SBR it, you know, put a red dot on it, maybe they're going to throw a suppressor on it and do a complete rig. Why not have it in a useful enough barrel length that you can actually defend yourself with it properly? That's just me talking. I'm not saying a seven inch isn't deadly. I'm just saying that a seven inch is certainly among, I would, I would put the seven inch as being in the useless category or, or the closer to being useless in a 5.56. I mean, why burn up all that powder and shoot a 5.56 when the barrel length isn't long enough to really yield you even close to the ballistic advantage that that cartridge is supposed to give you over something like a 22 Magnum or a 5.7. That's just me talking. Take it for what you will. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and I hope this pointed some of you in the right direction. So uh, I've got many more videos on the way. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something yet again. Uh, a big thanks to SDI for supporting our efforts. Those guys are great. Check them out. Really good people. Also, check out Robinson. These guys are doing some really cool stuff. I kind of wanted to show his guns off. 
in today's video just because that's something in the not AR category that some of you might like, okay? Many more videos on the way, guys. We'll see you soon.